Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about long acting injectable haloperidol deconiate. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about haloperidol deconiate. The conflict of interest is none. That means no person or any industry or pharma company has given money to make this video. This video is for purely academic purpose. Let's discuss about haloperidol deconate. Haloperidol is a first generation antipsychotic. It is a powerful D2 blocker. Hence, it has been approved for the maintenance treatment of schizophrenia. It is a potent D2 and 5H22C blocker also. Further, it mildly blocks alpha-1 adrogenic receptors. It needs to be administered exclusively to the gluteus maximus muscle since haloperidol deconate is very painful in nature. The usual dosage of haloperidol deconate is 100 to 200 mg per month. However, certain patients may require up to 300 to 400 mg per month. The usual starting dosage is 50 mg per month. The plasma concentration of haloperidol gradually rises and reaches peak by 6 days after the injection. Hence, additional oral haloperidol medications have to be given. However, half-life of haloperidol deconate is 3 weeks. Now let's discuss about how to start haloperidol deconate. Most of the psychiatrists advocate to start oral haloperidol medications initially. Stabilize the patient on haloperidol. Once the patient does not get any side effect and he maintains improvement, that is the time to shift over to injectable haloperidol deconate. Here, whenever you are planning to shift over to injectable, you need to convert that oral medication into 10 times to 20 times of the dosage. For example, if the patient is on 10 mg of haloperidol, multiply by 20. That means the patient requires 200 mg of haloperidol per month. Before you start, start the lowest dosage of haloperidol deconate, that is 50 mg. Please do continue oral haloperidol for a period of 1 to 2 months. Haloperidol is available as a 50 mg ml ampule. On the zero day, give 50 mg of haloperidol injection. Please continue oral haloperidol also. On 15th day, increase from 50 to 100 mg. Now continue the oral medication. Further, on the 30th day, give 100 mg and start tapering the oral medication. Once the patient is stabilized, either 100 mg, based upon the clinical response, you can, you can increase the dosage up to 200 mg per month. So my dear friends, haloperidol deconate can be given either 15 days once or else monthly once. Once the dosage is established, the interval of giving injection can be increased up to 4 weeks for maintenance dosage. If for the maintenance dosage, please do consider this equivalent dosage of haloperidol oral versus IM. If the patient is on 2.5 mg, please give only 25 mg of IM every month. That is half ampule. If the patient is on 5 mg of oral medication, give 50 mg of haloperidol deconate every month. If the patient is on 10 mg, give 100 mg of haloperidol deconate every month. If the patient is on 15 mg, please convert that into 150 mg, that is 3 ampule per month. Haloperidol deconate is not approved for treatment of patient with dementia related psychosis. There are few case reports in which sudden cardiac death has been noted in elderly population. Hence, one need to be very careful when you are giving haloperidol, haloperidol deconate for geriatric patients. There was a study conducted by Qureshi and his colleagues in a Cochrane review in 1999. 
that is dipoalopridol deconate for schizophrenia patient. The results of this review indicated haloperidol deconate was compared to oral haloperidol and other depo preparation. Eight trials compared haloperidol deconate to other depo preparations and did not find any difference with regard to global impression, mental status, behavior and side effects. That means haloperidol deconate was equally effective as any other first generation depo preparation. However, the study concluded there is an urgent need for RCT trial comparing depo preparation with various other oral and also injectable medications. If you look at the side effect profile of haloperidol deconate, prolactin, elevation, weight gain, akathisia, Parkinsonism, sedation, hypotension, rarely NMS can occur, pain at the site of injection is very common in haloperidol. Deconate. To conclude, my dear friends, there is no significant difference between oral haloperidol and injectable haloperidol. Further, injectable haloperidol deconate was equally effective as any other injectable depot preparation with regard to first generation antipsychotics. Haloperidol deconate improves compliance and adherence. The dosage of haloperidol can be titrated from 50 to 100 mg and few patients may require 200 to 400 mg per month. Based upon the response, you can give the over a period of one month a single dosage or maybe every two weeks once the injection can be given in a divided dosage which is required per month. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.